Gary Aguirre, an SEC investigator, received a two-step salary increase for his dedication to his work. His supervisor said, I quote, Aguirre has consistently gone the extra mile and then some. Then he got fired. Sell, sell, sell! Jim Cramer, a journalist and the founder of TheStreet.com, shouted, instructing his viewers on CNBC to dump Dendrion shares, because the FDA advisory panel would not vote that Dendrion's prostate cancer treatment is effective and safe. Dendrion's investors were confused because the FDA gave the treatment priority review status, because it showed strong trial results and was aimed at critically ill patients. The next day, the FDA advisory panel voted unanimously that the treatment was effective and safe. Michael Melkin, known as Junk Bond King, the only man with a higher bail than Sam Beckman Fried, was indicted for racketeering, securities fraud, and insider trading in 1989. As a result of a plea bargain, he pleaded guilty to securities and reporting violations, but not racketeering and insider trading. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison, fined $600 million, and permanently barred from the securities industry. Later, his sentence was reduced to two years because he cooperated in testifying against his former colleagues, and when he was released from prison in 1993, he devoted himself to philanthropic work and founded the Prostate Cancer Foundation, which his PR team cleverly used to rebrand his reputation. However, in reality, things were different. A company called Novacia, a biotech company that ostensibly had a promising treatment for prostate cancer, was founded in 2001 by Eckhart Weber, who works as an executive and partner of Domain Associates, a fund that shared the same address and was affiliated with ProQuest Investments. Industry reports stated that Domain was a mentor to ProQuest and an investor in the fund. One report states that the two funds plot strategy together. Ostensibly, ProQuest was founded by two people, Jay Marine and Jeremy Goldberg, but the man really behind ProQuest Investments was Michael Milken. Industry reports suggest that Milken was a firm rainmaker. It was Milken who supplied most of ProQuest's early capital, and it was Milken who was bringing ProQuest's deals to the table. Given that Milken was barred from the industry, it was the only way he could continue dealing in securities. So, as soon as Weber founded Novacia, the Milken's ProQuest and Domain had controlling stakes in the biotech company. Dendrion, the only company with a really promising prostate cancer treatment, was the most manipulated stock on Nasdaq. During some periods, the volume of trading in the shares of this small company exceeded the trading in America's largest corporations, a good sign that hedge funds were churning the stock to move the market. And with every burst of good news, the company faced waves upon waves of naked short selling, hedge funds illegally selling millions of shares that do not exist to flood the market and drive down the stock price. Along with the phantom stock, people seeking to diminish Dendrion deployed false financial research, biased media, bogus class action lawsuits, internet bashers, dubious science, and other familiar weapons of the battleground, as Jim Cramer once called Dendrion stocks. It was clear that someone wanted to destroy this company despite the prostate cancer treatment that could save many lives. But why? On April 5, 2007, Dr. Howard Scher of Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center wrote to the Food and Drug Administration. Dr. Scher was one of 17 doctors who served on the FDA advisory panel, and his letter vehemently argued that Dendrion's prostate cancer treatment should not be approved. This was strange for numerous reasons. It was unprecedented for a doctor to lobby the FDA after an advisory panel had already voted on a treatment. Remember, that advisory panel vote took place on March 29th, one day after Jim Cramer shouted, sell, sell, sell. The second thing strange about Dr. Scher's missive is that on April 13th, it ended up in the hands of the Cancer Letter, a publication whose subscribers include a significant number of Wall Street investors. FDA employees are forbidden to discuss the merits of medical products in public. And one big reason is that news of such discussions can profoundly affect stock prices. At the same time, criminal naked short sellers churned out more phantom stock, 
SEC data shows that at least 9 million shares failed to deliver on April 10th, since failures to deliver are recorded three days after the Phantom stock was sold. This means that massive amounts of naked short selling occurred on April 5th. On each day leading up to April 13th, the day that Dr. Scher's missive was published in the cancer letter, between 9 million and 12 million phantom shares failed to deliver. On April 10th, Tangion stock was trading at its high of around $25. By April 12th, the stock had already nosedived to around $18. Dr. Howard Scher, who was one of the 17 doctors who served on the FDA advisory panel, was at the same time one of the directors of the advisory board at Milken's ProQuest Investments. In fact, Dr. Scher was not just a director of ProQuest, he was also an executive of the fund, which likely means he stood to profit from its investments. Dr. Scher was, moreover, the chairman of the Therapeutic Consortium at Milken's Prostate Cancer Foundation. He also received unknown amounts of money as the lead investigator of Ascentor, the prostate cancer treatment that was being developed by Novacia, whose controlling investors were Milken's ProQuest and Domain Associates. Remember, on March 20, 29th, 2007, when Dr. Scher sat on the FDA's advisory panel, he was one of the 17 doctors who voted unanimously that Dendrion's treatment was safe. And two weeks later, Dr. Scher wrote a letter to the FDA in which he argued that the treatment should not be approved. <laughs> Gary Aguirre, the SEC lawyer who was fired after receiving a pay raise for extra dedication, was the lead investigator on a case of a naked short selling and insider trading by a hedge fund called Pickford Capital. Aguirre and his colleagues at the SEC believed that Pickford's naked short selling had the potential to seriously injure the financial markets. Suspecting the leaked information came from John Mack, a Wall Street titan and major contributor to the 2004 campaign of President George W. Bush, a Gary wanted to subpoena Mack, but supervisors told him Mack had too much political clout and would not be pursued. A Gary complained to a superior about the preferential treatment being given Mack and was fired without warning. In May of 2006, shortly after the SEC announced that it would not enforce its subpoenas, Gary Gary wrote a letter to the United States Congress in which he stated that he had led an SEC investigation into allegations of rampant naked short selling and insider trading at a hedge fund called Pickwood Capital. After that, a U.S. Congressional Committee investigated and issued a lengthy report noting that there seemed to be evidence that Pickwood was indeed engaged in stock manipulation naked short selling. As for the SEC failure to fully investigate Aguirre's allegations, the Congressional Committee concluded that the picture is colored with overtones of a possible cover-up. Late in 2008, the SEC reopened its investigation into Pickford Capital, and in May 2009, Pickford manager Art Sumberg shut down the fund. In May 2010, Pickford Capital settled its insider trading charges with the SEC for $28 million, and a month later, the SEC settled the wrongful termination suit filed by Aguirre for $755,000. About two months after Jim Cramer shouted, sell, 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 Tangion, on May 30, 2007, Novosia, controlled by Milken's ProQuest and Domain Associates, signed a $500 million deal with Schering Plow. In 24 hours, the price of Novosia shares jumped 86%. But just two months later, in November 2007, Novosia announced that the clinical trial of its treatment had been terminated due to an unexplained imbalance of deaths. In other words, Novosia drug was not improving the health of patients, it was killing them. And as soon as this news was released, the $500 million sharing plow deal was cancelled. Either shortly before or soon after the trials were terminated due to an imbalance of deaths, Milken's ProQuest and Domain Associates sold their stock in Novacia. Given the enormous boost the stock price had received after the $500 million news, it appears that ProQuest and Domain sold their stock at a significant profit. A day after Jim Cramer shouted, sell, 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 Tangion, on March 29, 2007, when the FDA advisory panel voted unanimously that Provenge, Tangion's treatment for prostate cancer, was safe and effective, Cramer said he had made a mistake. 
by way of explanation. Kramer said he confused Provenge with Provasic, the fictional drug from the Hollywood movie The Fugitive, in which Harrison Ford plays a doctor trying to expose an evil pharmaceutical company. At the time, a number of bloggers and stock watchers noted that Kramer had made a video available to a limited number of high-paying subscribers to his financial news website thestreet.com. In this video, Kramer advised his viewers, mostly Wall Street traders, to illegally drive down stock prices. Quote, Maybe you need $10 million capital to knock a stock down. It's a fun game and it's a lucrative game. By the way, no one else in the world would ever admit that, but I don't care. Now, you can't foment. You can't create yourself an impression that a stock's down. But you do it anyway because the SEC doesn't understand it. This is just actually blatantly illegal. But I think it's really important to foment. You get the CNBC reporter talking about it as if there is something wrong with the stock. Then you would call the Wall Street Journal and get the Bozo reporter. If you're not doing it, maybe you shouldn't be in the game. The founders of Jim Cramer's TheStreet.com are alongside him, Martin Perez, Amilcar Crony, and the hedge fund that got Gary Gary fired from the SEC, Pequod Capital. Pequod Capital was one of the hedge funds that held a large number of put options in Dendrion at the end of March 2007, right at the time when Cramer was shouting, sell, sell, sell.